more than two weeks, firefighters pumped millions of liters of water on the Hagersville fire, literally soaking it into submission. As the heat of the fire melted the tires, it produced a thick, oozing oil that mixed with soil and water on the site, posing a major problem for crews, contaminated runoff. Heavy rains carried some oily water into the nearby Sandus Creek, prompting the region's medical officer of health, Dr. Doug Kittle, to impose a water ban for homes and farms downstream. Earthen dams were quickly constructed to contain the discharged water. Heavy-duty vacuums pumped the thick oil from the surface of the water into tankers to be taken to a nearby refinery. The water collected was recirculated via irrigation pipes back to the firefighters' hoses. Concerned about the potential for longer-term runoff, the Ministry of the Environment quickly set to work constructing a water treatment plant next to the still smoldering tire pile. In a matter of days, two large capacity lagoons were carved out of the soil and lined with plastic to contain the treated runoff. A portable treatment facility with a 300 gallon an hour capacity was trucked into position between the fire site and the sand dust creek. The contaminated water from the site will be put through the plant, but prior to release into the service water, it'll be stored temporarily in, in, in the lagoons that you see behind me. There will be uh, tests carried out to ensure that it meets the, uh, the guidelines set out by the Ontario Ministry of the Environment. Uh, if it satisfies those guidelines, it'll go into the creek. If it doesn't satisfy the guidelines, it'll be treated and, until such time as it does. Good afternoon, Provincial Response While fire crews battled the blaze, an emergency response team of provincial officials coordinated efforts to contain the environmental damage and minimize the impact on the Southern Ontario community. The ministries of health, environment, natural resources, and agriculture and food worked with federal and regional health agencies to answer public inquiries. Dr. Jim Pettit headed the group monitoring the fire's effect on the quality and safety of food produced on area farms. We've been looking at the uh, air uh, sampling results from the Ministry of the Environment and the groundwater results, and we have uh, been able to uh, check with them regularly. We found those results, as, as you may well know, to have been uh, very acceptable, uh, very satisfactory. So there has not been a concern from that point of view. Agricultural representatives Heather and Ken Lennington spent hours of each day on the phone answering questions from local farmers and helping them respond to the disruption. They're very concerned about the public reaction about the uh, availability and the quality and the safety of the food products. When the medical officer of health advised that the drinking water in the fire zone and along the Sand Dust Creek not be used, Agriculture Ministry officials stepped in to advise farmers and to help restore confidence shaken by the disaster. One of the uh, tasks early on in this activity was to go through and inventory who the farmers were, uh, the types of production that they were in, uh, where their markets were, uh, their schedule as to when they were going to market. Um, going through and talking to the difference about uh, pulling water off the creek or pulling water out of a cistern or out of a well as far as the Sandus Creek is concerned and certainly within the uh, immediate area around the site as far as let's get some other uh, water systems in place. Only a few of the 95 commercial farms in the water restricted area actually draw water from the Sandus Creek. Although the creek now has a clean bill of health, the water advisory was maintained as an added safety measure. Dr. Tom Baker of the Ministry's Livestock Inspection Branch helped set up a monitoring program for the dairy, beef, swine and poultry farms in the area to both protect the health of the animals and the quality and safety of the food products. The first test results to be used as baseline levels showed no contamination from the fire. I think consumers can be quite uh, quite confident that the food supply is, is safe. Um, as I say, we've had no, absolutely no data to the contrary. Um, so I think that uh, people shouldn't be shouldn't be concerned about that at this time. But we certainly uh, don't dismiss the possibility of, of, of danger in the future, and that's why we bring these programs in place so that uh, just because it's not in the newspapers, maybe three or four months from now people can rest assured that, it, that our programs will continue and we'll still be uh, keeping a very close eye on, on the situation. Dairy products were the first to receive extra scrutiny simply because the tests were easy to set up. Milk truck drivers normally sample milk before it's picked up at the farm. 
inspectors from the dairy inspection branch now accompany drivers to take additional milk samples and to collect water samples from the farms for analysis. Testing programs have been set up to provide an extra level of assurance for other farm products in the area. Some farms will be designated as sentinel farms to be monitored over a longer period of time. We're working very closely with uh, Agriculture Canada and Health Protection Branch, uh, various agencies that are involved in food safety and in the process now of uh, implementing long-term monitoring programs. Along with the long-term monitoring of animal health and food products, the Ontario Ministry of the Environment will be conducting ongoing groundwater tests. Wells have been drilled around the fire site and will be checked on a regular basis to determine if contamination from the fire site is leaching into groundwater. Little was known before the Hagersville fire about how to put out such a fire and contain the environmental damage. But it was a lesson quickly learned. Much too will be learned in the future about how to clean up after such an environmental nightmare. I'm Barry McCormick for Town & Country Ontario.